Let's look at this nice trigonometry problem from the 2023 Harvard MIT math contest. So let's say we are given that sine of one plus cosine squared of x plus sine to the fourth of x is equal to 13 over 14. Our goal is to find cosine of one plus sine squared of x plus cosine to the fourth of x. And so observe that these two inputs of sine and cosine are different. This top one has a cosine squared, whereas a sine to the fourth, and we kind of have the opposite situation in the bottom here. So I'm gonna start by giving these some names just for notational convenience. So let's, talk, let's say that top one is equal to alpha. So we've got sine of alpha is equal to 13 over 14. And let's say that that bottom one is beta. So our goal is to find cosine of beta. And so let's first look at the difference of alpha and beta. So we could perhaps use, you know, a difference formula for one of the trig functions, or perhaps this is even simpler and we'll be able to use some information we gain from this difference more directly. Okay, so let's write this down. This is gonna be one plus cos squared of x plus sine to the fourth of x minus one plus sine squared of x plus cosine to the fourth of x. So obviously some stuff is gonna cancel here. So let's notice that the one will cancel. And then, then we'll be left with cosine squared minus cosine to the fourth but I'm gonna factor a cosine squared out and I'll be left with one minus cosine squared of x. And let's maybe color code that. So that's what's happening with these green terms. And then, well, what about these other terms, which maybe I'll underline in orange, the sine to the fourth terms? Well, let's observe that that's gonna be plus a sine squared, which can be factored out and then we'll have sine squared of x minus one. Okay, nice. But now we can use the Pythagorean trig identity to simplify this quite a bit. So let's observe that this first one is cosine squared times sine squared, because of course, of course we know one minus cosine squared is sine squared. And then we have plus sine squared times, well, that's gonna be negative cosine squared for essentially the same kind of reason. But notice that the difference here is zero. So that means alpha is in fact equal to beta. But now we can start to put this kind of stuff together. Notice that we know that sine squared of alpha plus cosine squared of beta will be equal to one. That's because alpha is equal to beta. So now we know sine of alpha, so we can use that to solve for cosine squared of beta. So observe, this means that cosine squared of beta will be equal to one minus sine squared of alpha. In other words, it'll be one minus 13 over 14 squared. But now we can calculate that and we'll see pretty quickly that that is equal to 27 over 196. Now taking the square root of both sides, we get two possibilities for cosine of beta. It's gonna be either plus or minus three times the square root of three over 14. So there are our two possibilities. Now we just have to figure out which quadrant beta is in, and that'll tell us whether or not we have a positive or a negative three root three over 14. So how can we do that? Well, let's observe that beta is equal to one plus sine squared of x and then plus cosine to the fourth of x. But now what I can do is I can take that sine squared and write it as one minus cosine squared. So this is gonna now be equal to one plus one minus cosine squared of x plus cosine to the fourth of x. In other words, it's gonna be two minus cosine squared of x plus cosine to the fourth of x. Now we can kind of put this together as saying that beta is equal to f 
evaluated at cosine squared of x, where f is the following quadratic polynomial. So it's f of t is equal to, let's see, t squared minus t plus 2. So notice we're sticking cosine squared in there. That's how we get like cosine to the fourth and stuff. But now what we can do here is we can use the extreme value theorem to find the minimum possible value and the maximum possible value of our function f of t. And let's observe that since we have cosine squared here as our input, that means that we are restricting t between 0 and 1. So of course, the largest cosine can be is 1, but since we're squaring it, the smallest cosine squared can be is negative 1. And so now, how could we use the extreme value theorem? Well, we could find the critical points and then test both the critical points and the end points to figure out where we get a minimum and a maximum. So let's see, our critical point occurs at 2t minus 1 being equal to 0. In other words, when t is 1 half. And so now we can simply make a list. We can look at f of 0. Notice f of 0 is 2. We can look at f of 1 half. Plugging in 1 half in there, we'll get 7 over 4. I'll let you guys check that. And then we can look at f of 1. But let's observe that f of 1 is also equal to 2. So, well, what does that mean? Well, so that means that beta is going to be between 7 quarters and 2 by the extreme value theorem. So let's maybe write that down. It's going to be in the set from 7 quarters to 2. But now let's observe that that set from 7 quarters to 2 is going to be between pi over 2 and pi. In other words, it's in the second quadrant. But what do we know? We know cosine is negative in the second quadrant. And well, since we're looking for the cosine of beta, we know that we must have a value of negative 3 times root 3 over 14, and that's a good place to stop.